Today I'm reviewing Lenovo's latest flagship mobile workstation, the P1 Gen 4. I'll be upgrading the hard drive and adding more RAM as well. This laptop is also branded as the X1 Extreme Gen 4. There are slight differences in graphics and processor options, but they are essentially the same machines, and the processes in this video will be identical for each. You'll see incremental changes under the hood over the Gen 3, 11th generation Intel processors up to 8 cores, a lot more graphics options with NVIDIA RTX, up to 64GB of RAM over two DIMM slots, two hard drive slots, one of the hard drives is now PCIe Gen 4, and we'll install the latest Samsung SSD to take advantage of the additional bandwidth. Battery is now 90 watt hours, up 10 from the previous model. I was able to get about 4 hours of streaming Netflix at 90% brightness. But the biggest difference is the change in screen size form factor. We're now at 16 by 10 aspect ratio, giving that extra height, also bumping the size of the screen up to 16 inches, going away from the 15.6 standard Lenovo has had for some time. Weight actually went up about a quarter pound over the Gen 3 on the non-touched version. We're going to install a 2 terabyte Samsung 980 Pro SSD and swap out the 16 gigabytes of RAM for a total of 64. First thing you'll notice is the laptop is very sturdy. Carbon fiber lid, magnesium chassis, same build material as the X1 Carbon. The laptop is dense, coming in around 4 pounds. Connectivity is about what you'd expect for a workstation. On the right side you have an SD card reader, a USB 3.2, an always on USB 3.2, nothing on the back, and on the left side you have power connector, Thunderbolt 4 port, a second Thunderbolt 4 port. This can be used for docking or USB-C display, HDMI 2 or 2.1 depending on graphics card, and headphone microphone jack. The display looks great, up to 600 nits, 4K resolution plus the extra height, and can come with color calibration. At the top, dual microphones and webcam with privacy shutter. On the keyboard you have a large trackpad with buttons, track point, stereo speakers on the sides, and power button with fingerprint reader. On the back you have fan exhaust and a small lip to allow airflow on flat surfaces. Okay, on to the upgrades. There are utilities to clone your existing hard drive, but if you choose to install a fresh copy of Windows, you'll want to download Media Installer from Microsoft and create a USB installer. You'll also want to grab the Lenovo Wi-Fi driver, as you'll see later. We'll need to disable the built-in battery before we open them back. You'll want to turn off Fast Startup, then go into the BIOS. Hit Enter at Lenovo splash screen, F1 to enter BIOS. Then down to Config and Power, and disable built-in battery. There are seven captive screws holding the back in place. Loosen all of them. I'll put a link to the toolkit I used in the description. To remove the cover, start here and gently start prying it off. It'll snap off and lift free. This will give us good access to the components we need. The Gen 4 SSD is here on the left, and the second slot, which is Gen 3 NVMe, is here on the right. One DIMM of RAM here, and the second is above. 90 kilowatt battery, and Lenovo describes how it designed a new thermal fan assembly to help cool the processor and graphics card. It's a two-fan system, and in my use, fan noise is still pretty audible. No high-frequency whine, but the fans still kick in pretty often. One big system board here, not like some of my other reviews where you see Lenovo use a common board for two form factors. WAN slot over here. One thing to note, this is NVMe Gen 4, but if you raid these two drives, they'll be limited by the slower Gen 3 speeds. There's a pretty big heat bracket on the SSD. It's kept in place by two screws. Unscrew both. Then gently remove the cover. You'll see there's a thermal pad underneath. If this is ever ripped, you'll want to replace it, and you'll see that I ripped it pretty easily. Remove the SSD screw and pull the SSD off and put it to the side. You'll see there's a second thermal pad as well. I bought additional thermal pads, and you'll want to cut them to size. Remove the pad on the board and put the new thermal pad down. Be sure to remove the bottom tape before applying. You'll want to carefully peel off the top tape and connect the new SSD. The SSD cover will go back on like this. We'll want to apply a new piece of thermal pad to the underside, again carefully removing the plastic. Reinstall in place and connect both screws. 
You'll notice on the second NVMe slot, there's already a thermal pad you can use. So if you're just installing a second drive, you'll already have a pad. You just peel back the plastic before installing. No cover needed on this side. Now for the RAM upgrade. I already have a module installed, obviously. You'll want to pop off the connectors and slide it out of its socket. Here's the new RAM, 32 gigabytes per stick. You'll install it upside down, lining up the notch in the connector. Snap it into place. Do the same for the bottom dim, this time upright, and snap into place. And that's it for the RAM. You can always just upgrade the empty slot if you're shipped that way. To reinstall the back panel, line up the tabs at the bottom and gently snap back into place. Tighten all the screws. To install Windows Fresh, connect the USB installer we just made earlier. You'll also need external power the first time, since we disabled the battery. It'll re-enable after it starts up once. Follow the instructions through Windows. You'll see our new unallocated blank hard drive installed to that location. If you happen to already have Windows on the hard drive, just make sure you pull the USB drive to the top of the boot order in the BIOS. Windows didn't recognize the trackpad nor the wireless adapter with the default install. So I had to install the Wi-Fi driver from the USB stick. Once online, Windows configured the trackpad, but I did have to use the track point during installation. A USB mouse should also work. You'll want to install drivers now. Be sure to get Samsung Magician for your SSD, and then you'll also want the latest drivers from Lenovo Support. You can install Lenovo Vantage or manually view the drivers. If your laptop included color calibration from Lenovo, you can restore that by downloading X-Rite and then restoring profile. The laptop shipped with the Gen 4 Samsung PM9A3. Speeds before and after the upgrade were very similar, with the 980 Pro a bit higher on sequential reads and writes. SSD temp stayed around 39 degrees Celsius. I did see temps jump up to 50 degrees Celsius under heavy data copy, but normally stayed well under that. Here's a visual comparison between the P1 and the X1 Carbon. Even though they're only two inches different in screen size, the X1 Carbon really does feel a lot smaller, very portable laptop. Significant weight difference too. That's it. Please feel free to engage in the community comments below.